In this video, we're going to be talking about using trigonometry to determine sling loading. A sling loading is also referred to as sling tension, and we'll get more into that with subsequent videos. There's actually going to be a series of videos. This is going to be this video is going to be an introduction to the trigonometric functions. Uh, then on subsequent videos, we'll actually do some sling loading, sling tension problems, and I'll explain more uh, about what we mean by sling loading. Uh, this is very common on certification exams. The CSP exam, just about every time, there will be a sling loading problem where you need to be able to use the basic trig functions, and they are very basic. This is all within anybody's ability to use these functions and solve these problems. Now this is not how sling loading is calculated in real world rigging applications. There's another method called the riggers method, which I'm also, also going to show you in another video. It's the riggers method that is commonly used for sling loading calculations. The riggers out on job sites do not use trigonometry to calculate sling loading. I mean, they could if they wanted to, if they had a scientific calculator and wanted to do it that way, they could, but they don't because of the other better, uh, easier method for calculating sling loading. But again, that's in another video. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the basic trigon trigonometric functions. Um, yeah, there are other trigonometric functions that we're not going to, that we're not going to cover in this video. We're just going to cover sine, S-I-N-E, also you'll see it spelled S-I-N, cosine, which also has an alternative spelling, and tangent. These are the three trig functions we're going to, we're going to talk about. You may remember from high school, if you had any trig, or maybe they covered it in an Algebra 2 class, or maybe a Calc class, uh, you probably, or you may remember this mnemonic device. So ka toa. That refers to each of these trig functions. So is for sine, ka is for cosine, and toa is tangent. And it's a mnemonic device to help us remember the mathematical operations involved with each of these functions. And we'll get to that when we talk about each of the specific trig functions. Now we're also going to talk about using the inverse of each of these functions. Uh, the inverse of each of these functions, arc sine for sine, arc cosine for cosine, and arc tangent for tangent. We can use these to calculate the number of degrees in an angle. Good. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, this slide to, to reinforce some of what I've already said and to build on some of what I've already said. Uh, trigonometry is all about right triangles. A right triangle has three sides, and these are the three sides that are of interest in trigonometric calculations when we're using these functions. The three sides are hypotenuse, the adjacent, and the opposite. Now the hypotenuse is always the long leg opposite the, the 90 degree angle, the right angle of 90 degrees. And here's your right angle of 90 degrees. And this is always going to be the hypotenuse. You could also think of it as the long side of a right triangle. And again, what makes a right triangle triangle a right triangle is this 90 degree angle. There will always be a 90 degree angle in a right triangle. And the sum of all three of the angles in the triangle will always be 180 degrees. And that's true for all triangles, not just right triangles. Again, you know, what we're dealing with are just right triangles. And Here's the hypotenuse. The other two sides are the adjacent and the opposite. These are determined based on its location relative to a reference angle. If this is our reference angle, let's call it angle A. The opposite is here and the adjacent is here. If this is our reference angle, this side is the adjacent this side is the opposite. And now these numbers here, don't worry about those yet. Those are just some values that we're going to work with in our examples. If our reference angle is up here, let's call it angle B, then this side is the adjacent and this side over here is the opposite. So again, adjacent and opposite is relative to 
the reference angle and the problem that we're dealing with. All right, let's take a closer look at sine, uh, this particular trig function. Sine is the ratio of the opposite leg to the hypotenuse. And here it is represented math mathematically. Sine equals the opposite leg, the value for the opposite leg, divided by the value for the hypotenuse. And the opposite leg is determined relative to the reference angle. If this is our reference angle, this side is opposite. And if this is our reference angle, we have everything we need to calculate the value of sine. Again, it's opposite over the hypotenuse, so it'll be 30 divided by 36.056, and sine is 0.83. Now, if, if this is our reference angle, then this side over here is going to be the opposite. And we'll use 20 divided by 36.056, and we'll come up with the sine of 0.55, again, if this is our reference angle. Now, we can also use this to calculate the number of degrees in each of these angles. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, again, we're going to use arc sine, and let's work on reference angle uh, B. And I need to pull up my calculator here. I did find a really cool calculator that... Uh, mimics, I mean, it's almost exactly a, a TI-30 uh, interface, and it's uh, been looking for one of these for a long time, finally found it, and we'll, we'll see how it works. Uh, but we want to find the number of degrees, which I've already got it up on, this, on the slide here, 33.69 degrees, but the, the way we came up with that 33.69 degrees is by hitting the second function, or the second key on the calculator, uh, sine, or I should say arc sine, is a second level function. So we push the second key, then we push the sine key, then we enter uh, 20 divided by 36.056 and enter. And there's the number of degrees in this particular angle. Again, we're talking about reference angle B here, or B is our reference angle, 33.69 degrees. And we round it. I'm gonna, and I'm gonna be rounding pretty much everything to two decimal places and rounded, uh, it's 33.69 degrees. Now let's calculate the uh, number of degrees in this angle using arc sine. There's another way we could do it. I'm not going to confuse you with showing you another method right now. But uh, using arc sine, again, it's a second level function. So hit the second key and then sine and then enter 30 divided by 36.056 and then enter. And we end up with 56.308, we'll round that to 56.31 degrees. And remember, I said a triangle has 180 degrees. All triangles, when you add the, the degrees of the three angles, it's always going to add up to 180. So let's use that just to check our math and make sure we haven't made a mistake. Uh, the degrees in angle A, 56.31. The degrees in angle B, 33.69. Then we always have the 90 degree angle. When we add all those up, it adds up to 180, where it should be. All right, well, that's, that's an introduction to sine. Let's take a look at cosine. And if you have any questions about this, you can always call me or email me or text me. But here's cosine. Cosine is the ratio of the adjacent leg to the hypotenuse. And sine was opposite to hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent to the hypotenuse. And there's the mathematical expression for cosine. Adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Again, the adjacent leg is determined relative to the reference angle. If A is our reference angle, then our adjacent is going to be this side here. And if the value of the adjacent is 20, cosine is going to be 20 
divided by 36.056 and we're going to end up with a cosine value of 0.55. If B is our reference angle, then this side is going to be the adjacent if B is a reference angle and it's going to be 30 divided by 36.056 and cosine is 0.85 or 0.83 sorry we can also use arc cosine to find the degrees and it's the same same keystrokes basically that we use for sine but I'll show them to you again again arc cosine is a second level function second key cosine key then enter the 30 for the value of the adjacent side divided by 36.056 which is the value for the hypotenuse and then enter 33.69 degrees and you've probably already caught on the numbers are all the same <laughs> as from the previous uh, slide when we talked about sine. Again, we're using the same numbers for each of these examples. So we're always going to end up with angle B being 33.69 degrees and angle A being 56 point whatever it was. Let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and do angle B, angle A, I'm sorry. Um, clear second cosine 20 divided by 36.056 enter and we end up with 56.31 degrees for angle A again angle B 33.69 angle A 56.31 we add everything up to make sure it adds up to 180 and it does again because we're using the same numbers it's the angle the value for the angles the, the number of degrees in each angle is going to be the same. We're just using sine to figure it out in the previous example. Now we're using cosine to, to figure it out. All right, the last trigonometric function I want to talk about is tangent. Now tangent will not be used for calculating sling loading. But there are some other problems that show up on CSP exams where tangent can help you find the answer or where it's tangents the only way to find the answer for some of the problems. So let's talk about tangent. Uh, tangent is the ratio of the opposite leg to the adjacent. And here is the mathematical expression for what we're talking about. Opposite divided the, by the adjacent. And whether it's adjacent or opposite, determine relative to the reference angle. If this is our reference angle, call it angle A. This is the opposite, this is the adjacent. And the value of the opposite is 30. The value of the adjacent is 20. We plug those into this formula, tangent equals opposite divided by adjacent. The value of tangent is 1.5. Now if this is our reference angle, call it angle B, then this side is adjacent and this side is opposite is flipped around from what it was for reference angle A. And we have uh, opposite value of 20 and adjacent value of 30. Plug those in, we end up with a tangent of 0.67. Then we can use arc tangent to find the number of degrees for angle B and angle A. Let's go ahead, one more example using the TI-30 calculator. Same process, we just use the TAN key instead of the, the COS or the SIN key. So second, TAN, and we're doing angle B, so it's going to be 20 divided by 30 and 33.69, just like it should be. Now let's let's do the same thing for angle angle a second tangent 
30 divided by 20. Enter. 56.309 or 56.31 degrees. And there's another way we could have done this for both of these problems. Let me show you that real quick. Uh, we could have just done, we could have done uh, second tangent uh, 0.67 because if we're talking about angle B, the tangent value is 0.67. We already have that. So we just do a second tangent 0.67. Seven. Because of rounding, it may be a little bit different, but it's going to be in the same ballpark, the 33 degree range. And that's the difference between this and this is because of rounding. I, I, that's why I prefer to do uh, do it the way I did previously. Uh, again, uh, tangent or arc tangent uh, 20 divided by 30. Just plug it all into the formula. And like we did on the other problems, we add it all up to make sure it adds up to 80, or 180, I should say, and there it is. And that is a brief introduction to tangent, uh, sine, and cosine, the basic trigonometric functions. Uh, again, can be used for sling loading calculations, can be used for a lot of different, more advanced engineering calculations as well. Could also be used, or these functions could also be used if we wanted to calculate the length of a ramp. Uh, we wanted to make sure the, the ramp was uh, 15 degrees, or let's say we want to build a 15 degree ramp. We know how, how high the elevation difference is, but we don't know how long our ramp should be. 15 degrees, we want to go up, let's say from ground level to three feet, how long of a ramp do we need? We can use uh, trig trigonometric functions for those types of problems as well. It really is useful. And I know we all think when we're taking math in high school and maybe even math in college, I'll never use this stuff. But there are some useful applications in our personal lives and also our, our work lives for these basic trigonometric functions. All right, well, that's it for this introduction. In the next video, we're going to use sine uh, or cosine to calculate sling loading or sling tension. Uh, don't forget about the extra credit opportunity. Uh, send me, uh, the first two people, to email me the name of the song and the name of the band will receive five extra credit points. All right, have a good evening, and I will see you in class.